Hi, I'm Frank Persico, and today I want to share with you some tips and suggestions to help you get more solo acoustic guitar gigs, specifically gigs where you're playing acoustic guitar and singing, or playing perhaps keyboard and singing. Same idea. What's great about solo gigs is in a world where kind of live music has been downsized or budgets have been shrunk, if you go out and you play a gig solo, you could make more money for yourself than if you play out with a band. Let's say the budget for a band is $500 and you have a four-piece band, you have to now split that, right? Well, if you go out and you t and the club owner is going to pay an acoustic act maybe only $300, but you get to keep all that money for yourself. So how do I know about this? Well, because I play probably over 100 gigs a year as a solo acoustic guitar player. That's what I do for a living. I play cocktail parties, I play restaurants, lounges, bars, private events, dinners, backyard events, you name it, I play it. And it's a really fun way to go out and make a living. You meet a lot of awesome people. You're always kind of challenging yourself to learn new songs. You get to play the songs that you love. And it's just a great way to make a living as a musician. A lot of people find it challenging though. Let's say you have you have your songs together, you have your equipment, you have your amp, you've maybe even played a few gigs before, and you just need people to know about you. You need people to know, hey, I'm really good at what I do. I can entertain a room full of people. How do you convince people who don't know who you are to hire you? And that's a challenge. It never goes away. I still have that challenge. It's very hard to convince new people when you're just getting started, how to hire you. Once you're out there playing regularly, other people will hear you. They'll take your business card. They'll follow you on, on your social media, which hopefully you have. And then you got the ball rolling. You got the train rolling out of the station, and it gets some momentum. But in the beginning, it can be challenging to get those first solo acoustic gigs, especially where the competition is fierce. There's many, many people who do this and how do you set yourself apart from everybody well one way is by having a niche having your specific brand if you will it might be the style of music you play maybe you specialize in folk or you specialize in 90s alternative rock it's really great if you can cover all genres and have a really really wide range well maybe you do have a really wide range maybe you cover 50s 60s 70s 80s but you do it in your way, in a specific style, and that's what gives you your niche. There's no really set way, or there's not one way to do it, but it's about being honest with yourself and finding where your strengths lie and finding what people react to when you do go out and play. Now let's get to some suggestions. Like I said, let's assume you have a pretty good repertoire, you have your instrument, you know how to play, you know how to sing, you've maybe played a few gigs before and entertained people and you've seen that they like what you do. What are some things you can do to help you get known in your area? I think the number one thing I would say is to get involved in the musical community in your area. And the best way to do that probably would be to go to an open mic. What's great about an open mic is obviously you have a bunch of other musicians, you could listen to what they're doing. You could get a feel for what's going on in the area, what people respond to. You could listen as other musicians perform and see how the audience is taking it. The other good thing about open mics is generally if a venue is having an open mic, it's probably a venue that has live music or is interested in having live music or maybe is kind of scouting for who they want to hire for live musicians. A lot of venues use the open mic as a way to hear what's going on, and they'll use that to decide who they're going to hire. So if you go to an open mic, go there with a professional attitude, go there well prepared, don't make excuses, and show that audience honestly what you're made of, what you can do. Another thing is have respect for the other artists that are performing. Listen to them. Don't go in there all about yourself, because people can see through that. They don't they, nobody's interested in somebody who's only about themselves. It should be about 
everybody who's there. You want to appreciate the other musicians and all the other patrons in the venue. And when it's your turn to perform, you want to get up there and give them an authentic performance. Show them who you are and what you do. And do it professionally and do it from an honest place. People will sense that. And if you do well, the owner will sense that. And don't be surprised if you get a call. Also, meet the owner. Get to know who's doing the bookings in the venue that you're in. You might go to a music venue just to listen to another artist. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to who's running the place, okay? Get to know that person. Say hello. You might not want to run up there and say, hey, I'll, you know, I'm a musician too. Take your time. It's like a first date. Just get involved in the musical community in general. So let's say now you have a place where you are now regularly going for an open mic. Or maybe it's even the first time you went for the open mic. What you need to do is have video footage of you performing. So if it's, let's say, it's the first time you go to the open mic and you don't want to walk in there like with a camera crew or with your own camera on a stand or on a tripod, have a friend with a phone. Record yourself. Have somebody recording your performance. What you want to do is amass footage of you in a live situation performing. Now you may go to 10 open mics, you may not like any of the footage you get, but what's going to happen is you're going to start to review the footage that you get and fine tune your show, your performance. You might find things that you thought you did well that you really didn't, or songs that you thought everybody would love and then you listen back on these live performances and you realize Hmm, that could be better. Don't be afraid of that. Use that as a way to improve what you're doing. And when you go out to the next live performance, the next open mic, you could bring that camera again and eventually you'll get footage that you like. And keep all of that footage because I'm heading somewhere with this and you'll see. You could offer to play a event for a friend, something for free. Your friend's having a backyard party and you just want to play, tell your friend, I'll play for an hour. I'll come for free. Set it up like it's a real gig. Every time you play, it's a real gig. Dress professionally. Bring your equipment. Make sure the sound is good. Have your set list ready. And be videoing it. Because ultimately, what you want to do is have video reels of you performing live. I can't stress enough how important it is to have footage of you playing live. What could you do with that footage? Well, you can post clips of it to your Instagram. You can make a montage of your best moments on YouTube. And when a potential client says, hey, you know, what is it that you do? You can send them the link. Here's what I do. And it's footage of you playing in an actual venue. So that gives you credibility. What I used to do is I would research venues in my area. I'm in New York City, okay, so there's a lot of venues. There's also a lot of competition. I would research venues that had live music and send them an email. Okay, here's what I do. I'm an acoustic guitar player. I sing. Here's where I played. I've done this. I've done that. There's a good chance that nobody ever even opened those emails, okay? These places get bombarded with everybody who's a musician, whose friend's a musician, everybody under the sun tells them they're a musician. There's no barrier to entry, okay? Every Joe Blow uh, who has a guitar is, is a singer, guitar player, okay? So at least it, if you can send them a link to you doing it, you have at least that much more of a chance of them seeing what you do. Even that might not even help, which is why the first thing I said was go to venues that have music. Listen to other musicians, see what they're doing. Get to know people in the area that you live where live music is happening. When you do go to an open mic, have business cards with you so that if somebody likes what you do, you can hand them something. Maybe your business card has your Instagram square code on it where they could scan it and follow you. Okay? You should have an Instagram account. You should have a Facebook account. Ideally, you should have a website. And these accounts will show video of you doing what you do. Another thing you could do is play charity events. Play local community events that don't pay and bring a camera. Get footage of you playing these events. There's veterans hospitals you could play at. Veterans facilities. Okay. There's 
senior citizen homes. There's now you might say, oh well, there's only old people there. Then, no, well they have family members that are there, and there are workers that are there, and you're putting out good energy into the world. You're making your music. You're making people happy. That will get you gigs. That will come back to you. You could volunteer to play, and I used to play at the Children's Hospital, at the Cohen's Medical Center here in New York City. Play for the kids. Okay. Go out and share your music and what you do with the world. Do it with an honest heart and see how people receive it. That will get you gigs. Maybe not directly the way you're thinking of it, but doing that, putting that out there, will bring you gigs. Another suggestion is to go live on Instagram and Facebook when you're at a show. Go live. Let people in on it. Okay? Let them see you doing and hear you doing what you do. Or go live from your living room. Go live at home. Okay? If you have a Facebook music page, hopefully, a professional page, you go live from there and people get to hear you do your thing. If they comment on anything that you did, answer them back. If they message you, answer them back. You can um, build a nice community of fans or clients fans, clients, same thing, right, from going live. Also, there are online services. There are websites like, let's say, Thumbtack or The Bash, Gig Masters, that specialize in letting you list yourself as a vendor. These are paid websites for the most part. Go out and research some of them. And once you have your real of video footage and you have your repertoire together and you've got some client testimonials maybe of people who've booked you who are gushing about how fantastic you were and they're willing to put it in writing you might be willing to spend a little money and get on one of these professional sites where you will receive leads on work and you'll be out there competing against everybody else in your area that does it but you'll get a real idea of where you stand and you'll get feeds for work that you might not have gotten before. Event planners go on those pages. Bar and club owners go on those pages. People who are having weddings and parties, private events, they go on those pages to hire musicians. They don't know where to begin. That's where they go. If you're on there with a good presence and a good video presence and good client testimonials, somebody will feel safe in hiring you. You have a better chance at landing the gig. So check out online paid websites to promote yourself. But I suggest you do that later on once you have a few, not a few gigs under your belt, once you have some steady gigs under your belt and you want to take it to the next level, then you invest a little bit of money in those sites. If you do it right away and you don't have any momentum, it might frustrate you if you don't get hired and you'll feel like you wasted money and then you'll give up on it before it even had a chance to work. So I'm going to be doing a lot more videos in the future about acoustic solo gigs. It's something I know a lot about. I do it every week, all the time. Follow me, please, if you like this content. You know, leave comments. And um, check out some of my other content here. I do pedal reviews and I have some performances. But I'm going to make a effort to do more talking head type videos like this about acoustic solo gigs. So hopefully help you out. Have a great one. I'll see you in the next video.